Hello again and welcome to uh, lecture number four uh, on the module, the thermodynamics module. Uh, today we're going to continue our discussion uh, of the first law of thermodynamics uh, and where we introduced energy last time, you may recall. Um, it was, we managed to define energy macroscopically uh, without referring to the microstructure, the microscopic world. Um, and we did this by observing that when we take a system round a cycle, the algebraic sum of heat transfers matches the algebraic sum uh, of work transfers. So in mathematical terms, we found that uh, using this symbol, with a little ring on it to indicate that we're going around a cycle, uh, that delta Q was equal to, uh, again, we're going around a cycle, delta W, the same cycle, of course. <laughs> and we could rewrite that thing, and we, we essentially give us that, if we looked at the integral going around a cycle, of delta Q minus delta W, then that thing was identically zero. So this is what Joule uh, uh, noted. Uh, because this was equal to zero, and we deduce that this thing, this delta Q minus delta W, must be uh, related to a property. Uh, well, it's a different, the differential of a property, in fact, D, DU, we called it. Because uh, we know that if we take any property around a cycle, it must always give zero. Uh, because it's not depend on the path. And if you take it back to the starting point, the difference between the start point and the end point um, well, where the end point is the start point, uh, must be zero, yes? So, and you can see then that if I let uh, du equal delta q minus delta w, then, of course, if you go around a, a, a cycle for du, with u being a property, uh, any property come to that, you will always get this result. Uh, that the integral the u is equal to equal to zero, basically because the end point and the start point are the same, of course, uh, in that case. And we call this u energy uh, into in kilojoules. Everything's in kilojoules here. Uh, they all have to have the same units uh, to to make sense. Um, we also added some extra mechanical energies in there, didn't we? Just uh, for completeness. Um, um, and looked at various forms uh, of this equation. Uh, so let's just recap what we did. We said, look, this also, if we put the mechanical energies in, we can have uh, dE is equal to delta Q minus delta W. That was one thing. Uh, where E, you may recall, was equal to the mass uh, times U so that specific uh, energy plus a half v squared uh, velocity here, so half times half v, mv squared, kinetic energy as we know, plus uh, g uh, 9.81 meters per second squared on uh, the constant due to gravity, uh, acceleration due to gravity, and the height, of course, for, we call that z uh, for for uh, for potential energy, so we added in the uh, the mechanical terms. In this one, our u then uh, was our intrinsic, or specific in this case, in, uh, internal energy, uh, which we which we define by this process without, in fact, looking at the microscopic micros microscopic aspects at all. Um, so we can write we can write this like that, and also we can divide through by the mass. So we add du equals uh, delta Q minus delta W uh, and dE equals delta Q minus delta W. Uh, so that's just defined through by the mass of the system for a closed system, of course, the mass is constant, doesn't change. Uh, so you can always divide these equations through by mass uh, to change them, uh, and then this is this this notation for that would mean uh, this is a obvious well this is a a small increment of energy heat transfer per unit mass of the system, uh, so kilojoules per kilogram yes, 
And this is, a, again, the, the work done by the system uh, for unit mass, infinitesimal amount of work. So we're imagining our, again, we're imagining our system, of course, and remember that uh, we have our delta Q going in the system and our work being done by the system and these, these arrows indicating the, uh, the positive transfer of, of energy uh, as, according to our convention. We also add uh, the rate form, didn't we? We looked at the rate form. This is uh, for uh, more realistic analysis, in fact. When we get on to open system, you'll see we have to go to the rate form. Um, so we could replace any of these ones. Let's do this one then. We could replace that by a derivative dE is equal to dE by dt dt and that's equal to uh, delta Q which we recognize now that the Q is not a property uh, it's not really a function therefore you can't uh, differentiate Q uh, you can specify the rate though you can specify the rate of Q that's uh, Q dot dt and similarly for work W dot dt we can specify the power, power output from a system, and that is not a problem. Uh, but what we can't do is specify the work at a given state point. This is what we can't do. We can't specify the heat at a given state point. Uh, that's something we can't do. We can specify how much heat in kilojoules that we put into a system or take out of a system uh, as you go from one state point to the next, but that will depend on the path taken. We can drop out the delta T's here and we get then that uh, dE by dt is equal to uh, Q dot minus W dot. So there we go, there's uh, the rate form uh, of, the, of the first law uh, thermodynamics. And these forms come in handy, as I said, we're going to see more of the rate form when we get onto open systems. Uh, the differential forms are quite useful when we're looking at uh, quasi-static processes, certainly, uh, because it, when with quasi-static processes, we can everything's practically moving quite slowly, and we can find, find define uniform properties as T pressure and so on. Uh, now U um, and V, of course. So we can define the um, temperature and pressure uniformly. And if we do change the system very slowly, then the, these things will be defined. And uh, we find that in that case, we can relate uh, W, for instance, to, well, we found it already, displacement work. Uh, and also we haven't done one for delta Q yet, but one's coming, a differential uh, relationship uh, where we do things quite slowly, generally, for that. So the differential forms are themselves quite useful. Uh, we're going to find them quite useful indeed uh, for those type of processes. Uh, rate forms are very useful for more uh, realistic processes. Also, of course, we can integrate, can't we? So we know that if I integrate these uh, expressions out, then we have the difference form of the uh, equations. And uh, so, so let's do that then. So if I integrate um, du, for instance, uh, between state point one and state point two, then uh, that would simply give us u2 minus u1. Uh, and if you integrate the right hand side, let's do an exactly the same thing. The integral, uh, let's put it right as this delta q minus delta w between state point one and state point two. Then the way we write this, we write this as q1 to 2 minus w1 to 2. So that's uh, so, just, so this the this is the if you like the finite form where what we're doing here is uh, defining the work and heat transfers from one from one state point to the next. So it's not a differential form. The differential form just looks at this tiny change. Uh, quite often uh, when we're looking at uh, 
system movement from one one state to another. These are the these are the type of equations we'd be looking at. Uh, of course, I can do the same for the E one as well. So let's write that one down. Uh, e two minus E one is equal to Q one to two minus W one to two. Uh, so that's uh, that's important. So that's the finite form, finite differences for the properties, uh, numerical values for the Q and and um, uh, and the work um, in that case. So that's essentially where we got to last time. Uh, we still haven't got to the situation yet where we can uh, uh, solve um, problems. We're very, getting very close now. Uh, one of the things we need to know how to do, I think, uh, is to know how to work out uh, the energies. Uh, as you can imagine, we can't really measure energy. There's some things we can measure, some properties we can measure. We can measure temperature, you know, we've got thermometers and uh, thermometric uh, properties that we could use to, to relate to temperature. Uh, pressure, pressure transducers, not a problem for measuring pressure. Volume, well, we can usually figure that out. Uh, we can figure out what the volume might be. Um, energy, though, yes. I mean, if, if energy is really microscopic, it's really telling us about the energy of um, the particles, we, you know, we can't uh, bear in mind that that is ten to the twenty-three uh, num order of numbers on a, on uh, atoms on a pinhead. It's actually very difficult, therefore, to imagine that we could count the or try to measure the individual uh, energies of these particles. Um, so clearly, that's not possible. So energy is generally not measurable directly. Uh, so, but we do have our two property rule we mentioned uh, earlier on. Uh, well, for certain systems, sim fairly simple systems, admittedly, if we specify two properties, then uh, we know all the rest. So it's kind of suggesting that we can actually get to uh, energy if I know two properties, or if I knew temperature and volume, for instance, uh, I might well be able to figure out uh, what the energy is it turns out that um, in thermodynamics we're not really interested in the absolute value of it for for energy uh, absolute values do exist but you'll notice when i look at these formulas uh, they're essentially about a difference so uh, and quite often therefore that is all we're after uh, we generally don't know the 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 u uh, the u1s and the u2s uh, uh, in, in absolute terms uh, but what we can work out very easily generally is the difference between uh, between um, the, the as you move from one state to the next which is quite often all we're really after um, so we'll see a little bit more about that a bit later on but generally uh, uh, we do have absolute terms for some of the things temperature and pressure these are absolutes aren't they we uh, we always talk about in thermodynamic absolute pressure. Uh, so everything above zero, yes. Um, and temperature as well. We, uh, we haven't gone on to the temperature scale yet, but we're going to measure, mention that and consider temperature and define that. Uh, measuring Kelvin, but that's an absolute scale. Um, volume, I guess, is absolute, yes. <laughs> What's negative volume? Uh, you, uh, we tend not to specify what, absolute user but they are it is it comes from another theory it doesn't come from thermodynamics uh, it comes from einstein's work in fact uh, and the relationship between energy and mass so it comes from a slightly different form but, as, but for some problems we're going to find we don't really need to know that um we just need to know the differences which is which is quite useful uh, okay i wanted i wanted to introduce in fact three new properties today um, so this is what we've covered thus far um, but I'd like to, um, to introduce properties that are going to allow us to uh, figure out what the energy is doing. Um, and also, well, we've got two properties that's going to allow us to do that, which are called uh, heat capacity, specific heat capacity we've got to look at. Uh, two, two of them, one at constant volume and one at constant pressure. 
uh, we're also going to introduce something called enthalpy, uh, which is very similar to uh, U, uh, but you'll find it's quite useful. Once we've got properties, we can, can, can always combine them to form other properties. Uh, and this is what enthalpy comes about at. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the first ones we're going to look at is um, uh, sp specific heat capacity uh, we're going to call it CV uh, at constant volume okay so let's consider the first law we're going to go to the first law uh, and we're going to consider um, for this for to get to the definition of this we're going to consider a pressure vessel a rigid pe pressure vessel uh, so imagine uh, so let me draw my pressure vessel if I can uh, so let's something like that and uh, so very and in this oops so a good diagram so in this thing we have our system of material liquid gas fluid even a solid you could put in there um a soft solid i guess uh, so the pressure it's um, so we've got our material in there this is our system uh, we can well, it's rigid. We're not going to do any work on this system, but we can imagine uh, putting energy into the system. Um, and we can imagine a small amount of energy going into that. We could be eating it up. Um, and we could call that, let's call it delta Q. Uh, per unit mass. We have the mass of the system. Let's assume we know that. Uh, so specific terms, uh, it's quite useful. Well, we're going to look at specific heat, so I will start off looking at the specific terms. Uh, let's apply the first law uh, to this to this uh, to this system. So we know from the first law that du is equal to delta Q uh, minus delta W. So that's in the that's in the uh, specific heat. So specific heat. Is that um, he transfer specific work and uh, specific in, internal energy, intrinsic internal energy? Uh, now we've not got any work per se. The volume of this system it's rigid, uh, so this is uh, so we, let's this is a rigid pressure vessel. So what that means is that. Um, uh, delta V is equal to zero. There's no change in volume. Quite difficult to achieve in practice, in fact. Uh, but uh, let's assume that we've got that. Uh, the pressure can change, but the, uh, the volume has not been allowed to change. There's no shaft work, anything like that. So we can clearly get rid of uh, this term. We can uh, take that away. And... Uh, so no work term. So we end up with du is equal to delta Q. Uh, so what we can see is that if I'm putting energy in, it transfer into this system, uh, it's increasing the energy. It's increasing the internal energy of the system. Uh, we'd like to be able to figure it out, what this, what this is. Um, now, in the notes, I do it in a slightly different way. We're going to, we're going to take the view that uh, here, that uh, the internal energy here, um, uh, we're going to use a, a simple rule then, that's a simple system, uh, and it's definable by two properties, let's say. So uh, U could be a function of, uh, certainly temperature uh, and volume, we might argue. Uh, so a two property rule, been applied here so this is application uh, so this is the two property rule the two property rule being applied really says that if you've got two properties I know the temperature of this system I know the volume of this system 
then you could argue I know all the other properties. Um, just so happens that the volume in this case uh, is not going to be changing. Well, fair enough. Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, well, we've arranged it so that it doesn't change, in fact. Uh, now, we know we've got a differential here. So our differential, the U, we can look at, uh, we can define this in terms of partial uh, differentiation. I think you've met this on your maths course. So what we can do, we can differentiate this thing with respect to U, U with respect to temperature. Yes. And when we do a partial derivative, we all sum it constant. Yes. Uh, in this case, it's going to be bottom again. So partial U by dt, I'm going to put this line here, and I'm going to call this, um, uh, I'm going to call it little v, in fact. It doesn't matter um, if it's little v or big v here, the mass is v. Uh, so U could be a function of temperature volume or a specific volume, yes. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, just for convenience, I'm going to uh, use little v there. Um, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, dt. Yeah, so that's the du uh, plus partial du by um, dv, uh, the constant temperature, uh, dv. And that, according to this rule, so that's my du. Uh, it's, that's just a way of, bear in mind, this is a property. We can relate it to other properties. This is what we're saying. Uh, we've got the two properties rules. So I relate this to other properties. In this case, I'm making it not v, but it'll be. Um, so that's what we're doing. Uh, and that's equal to delta q. For this system, this thing is zero. Okay, so this thing, I've set it up so that that vanishes for this thing. Uh, so we have, let's see what we have. We've got du is equal to partial du by dt, or in volume or specific volume, constant dt. Um, and that's equal to the Q for this case. Now this derivative here, this derivative I'm going to call CV. So let, let CV, the specific heat, a constant volume uh, to equal the derivative of U respect to temperature falls in V constant. So that's just a, that's just a, a definition. Uh, so we have that, uh, substituting that into there, we find in that uh, du is equal to CV dt for this process is equal to delta Q. So, CV, we find that uh, we can tabulate these things, and we have tables for these, and we're going to get on to that for the next lecture. We'll be looking at um, tables of properties. Uh, but here we have, let's just write that, we've got, uh, so the, well, we have two things we can know. We've got, from this equation, from the left-hand side of this term here, we can see that uh, we can figure out uh, if we knew no CV, what the change in energy is, yes, uh, what the change in energy is uh, by the change in temperature. Uh, now, quite often, CV can be a function of temperature. Uh, it's generally not really, it's a fairly weak function of other things, but certainly, predominantly, uh, it can change with temperature. Um, we're going to find for... Um, yeah, it, it, it is, it's something that uh, uh, it's, it's tabulated. You'll find it uh, does depend on temperature quite strongly. 
Um, although quite often, um, well, it may find over a, a range of temperatures, it, 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 you treat it as a constant. We quite often treat it as a constant. Uh, so we'll find tabulations of this. Um, so that this part is telling me what how the energy is changing. As I said, energy is very difficult to, to measure energy. But what you can do, of course, is measure other things and other things, um, other things changing and being able to measure them allows us to figure out what the what the what the uh, what the energy change is. If you look at this side of the equation, well, this is telling me what the heat transfer is, of course, uh, what the heat transfer is into the system. Uh, again, if we know our CV. Um, uh, we can we can work out um, what the heat transfer into the system is. Uh, we can work out CV using calorimetry as various techniques to uh, to work this out. Various experimental techniques we can we can apply uh, to um, to get values for that. Uh, as I said, all, a lot of these values are tabulated, so we can use them uh, in our in our calculations. Um, so, which is very convenient uh, indeed. So, if you want the energy change, as I said before, that the we're quite often interested in the change in energy rather than the uh, rather than the um, absolute values for energy. Uh, so, if I look at this left hand side, this system here. So, if I integrate that, we can do that. Can we go from one to two to u? Uh, that's u two minus u one. And that's equal to the integral then uh, of CV dt. And that's an integral with respect to temperature, of course, so T2, T1 to T2. Uh, and if it tr transpires that CV is uh, constant, uh, we can get uh, CV uh, T2 minus T1. So this is quite an important formula, U2 minus U1. Um, do a, oops, careful. <laughs> uh, let's write that down properly. Uh, a little use, of course. That's not uh, u two minus u one. So u two minus u one. You can get the big use just by multiplying by the mass, of course. That's how you get that. But we're looking at specific heat capacity, uh, not heat capacity. So this is specific heat capacity, constant volume. So the change in specific heat. The energies, sorry, the specific energies uh, is given by this simple form that when CV happens to be equal to a constant uh, for constant. So that is quite a useful formula for working out the change in energy of a system uh, at constant volume. Uh, uh, and it's given by a relatively simple, simple relationship uh, in this case. Um, so that's quite that's quite useful indeed. Well, the other, the other value of, uh, uh, of CV, of, uh, of specific heat capacity, that's uh, important to us is, is is one that's done at constant pressure. Um, uh, so let's have a look at that case, shall we? So this is specific heat capacity. Uh, at constant volume, its definition is simply the rate of this derivative partial u by dt at constant volume. Yes, yeah, so, or specific volume, whatever, doesn't make any difference um, uh, for these for these systems. And that's the definition for this particular um, this particular value. It's tabulated. We can use it. Uh, we can work out. And obviously, uh, with this type of thing. Uh, if we apply the right hand side, then what do we find? We find that Q, in this case, the exact, this one we find integrating, um, this is equal to that, of course, but also if I integrated the Q, that's, that is that as well, 1 to 2 Q, uh, delta Q, yeah. And of course, then this would be equal to uh, Q12, would it not? For this system, so if I wanted to figure out 
You know, as I said before, delta Q is infinitesimal amounts. If we want finite amounts, so then we have to integrate the delta Qs between the, the end points, the state points. Uh, so that would be Q12 is so a finite number. Uh, and that's given for this particular example, at least, we have a closed system uh, in a rigid pressure vessel. Uh, we can work out uh, everything, really, provided we know uh, the specific heat capacity. Uh, if we know CV, uh, and given that we know the end temperatures, then we can work out how much energy was actually transferred to the system. And at the same time, we can work out what the increase in internal energy of the system was. So this, this is quite a, So this is, in fact, our first means at the moment of doing a, a real calculation uh, where we found out how to work out uh, the change in energy. Um, we can't measure it, but we can certainly work it out by looking at the change of other properties which are measurable, uh, which are temperature uh, and other properties, of course. Uh, but here, the temperature is the most important one. Okay, so that's specific heat at uh, constant volume. Let's look at specific heat at constant pressure. And also, we'll introduce the property enthalpy here, which turns out to be a very convenient thing for us. Uh, so let's get rid of this and let's look at the specific heat capacity, usually just called specific heat, uh, but specific heat capacity, specific heat capacity. I'm going to call this one CP at constant pressure. So the specific heat capacity at constant pressure this is what we're interested in uh, this case. So let's consider a much easier thing to do is do things at constant pressure. Let's consider a system then uh, where we've got, well, our usual system, I think we're always using, we've got a weight on top. Uh, so we've got our piston. Uh, we've got a weight on this thing. Let's imagine that. So we've got a weight on, uh, and we've got our system here. And in the system, pressure, of course, uh, temperature of interest to us uh, in that system. Uh, and again, we're in, we're in, let's put some energy into this thing. Let's heat it up. Uh, delta Q, so we've got the mass of the system, uh, which is fixed. Uh, so delta Q is the amount of energy we put in, an infinitesimal amount of energy in heat, heat transfer per unit mass of the system. And because this weight is just, you know, it's the same weight, whatever it is, not going to change, the pressure inside must balance the weight and obviously the atmospheric pressure. Uh, the pressure is going to stay constant. Is it not? You know, even though the system could expand, uh, it's still the same weight. So this is a constant pressure situation. Um, let's add this some thick solicitables uh, in that case. So this is a situation where we've got constant pressure. So what we want to do is apply the first law of, of thermodynamics to this. Uh, in our different, we're looking at differential form initially. So let's have a look at that. We've got delta U. Du is equal to delta Q minus delta W. Yep, so that's, our, that's our first law. Uh, in this situation, we have uh, when we put heat into the thing, the volume is going to change in this situation. It's, um, as energy goes in, it's going to expand this system. And we're going to have a displacement work. Uh, so so for this case, we're going to have that delta W is equal to P dV. Uh, and I've made it specific here. Uh, these are specific terms, so this is specific volume, yes. Um, so what we can do is substitute that into there. So let's do that. We've got du 
is equal to delta Q at minus P dV uh, in that case. Well, what we could do is uh, let's take this to the other side. We'll see why in a second. We've got du plus p dv is equal to delta q. However, in this case, pressure's a constant, yes? Pressure's constant. So what I can do, I can take this d, well, or I can take the p inside this d. This is a differential, it di differentiates the thing. Uh, but, but because pressure is constant, it can move in, in and out derivatives, it's of uh, no consequence. And I can rewrite this thing as d u plus p v uh, is equal to delta q. That's what I can do. And the reason I can do, the reason I can do it is because uh, the pressures are constant here. So if I bring the d inside again, uh, it, it operates on the du, on the u. And, but it just flies past the, the P because it doesn't do anything, it doesn't change uh, and just operates on the DV. So that thing and that thing are in fact the same. And what I'm going to do now is call this something else. I'm going to call this H. Uh, I'm going to let H equal U plus PV. So I'm calling this H. And H I'm going to call specific. Enthalpy. Um, specific, and that's kilojoules per kilogram, so let's put that in. Kilojoules per kilogram. So that's units of specific. Well, everything, it's energy divided by uh, mass, isn't it? Uh, so this is how we define enthalpy. Uh, there's nothing magic about it. I can always form uh, other properties by using properties I already know. Uh, of course, I know pressure, I know temperature, I know volume, I know or specific volume, if you like. Um, so if I combine them, I'm guaranteed that I've got another property. After all, these are independent. U, P, and V are independent of the path the system goes through. They're properties. And equally, therefore, it must be the case that H itself must be uh, independent of the path and it's another property. So H, uh, so H is a property. H is a property. Now it turns out to be quite a useful property and does sim in this case does simplify, uh, does simplify um, our, our, our equation. So let's put, what have we got? This thing then becomes dH equals delta Q. Okay, so that becomes that. There's nothing magical about this, it's just a, uh, I'm just defining something uh, called enthalpy. Uh, we're going to see it appear all over the place. Uh, it doesn't have a microscopic definition. This is, uh, not, not, not all these combination type things do, where you take more, more than one property and combine them in some way. U we know is associated with uh, particles, the energy of the particles. And the best way to think of enthalpy is actually, it is more or less the same thing. Quite often it is, this is what dominates this thing. Um, but um, it, we'll find it's quite convenient and we find it convenient now. In fact, <laughs> we've, uh, we've managed to get uh, our equation simplified at least uh, in this case. It's a property now we can we can again can look at our two property rule here. Um, uh, we don't have to, but we, we're going to, uh, and we can conveniently take the view that H itself, you know, if we can't measure U, we can't measure lit, measure H. I think is uh, uh, consequence. Uh, but what we can say is that H could be a, a, a function of, uh, and in this case, I think the important functions are suggest. H is a function of temperature and pressure. Uh, so a function of two other properties. And this is again the two property rule. Uh, 
by temperature and pressure. Well, temperature, of course, is particularly important in thermodynamics um, and uh, drives most things. Uh, pressure here, because, uh, well, pressure is going to be a constant. <laughs> uh, so it's a useful one to focus on at this, very much like the previous analysis I've just done. I did it for you. We had exactly the same equation, essentially, but this was you last time when we were looking at CV. Uh, now we've got uh, H, um, and we're looking at uh, uh, the, essentially the same form. Um, and I've, we're looking at H because it's, it's come about, of course. We recognise there's some displacement work. Uh, you'll notice, in fact, that uh, this equation automatically, it's, the, it's a form of the first law of thermodynamics, and automatically takes account of the fact that the system is pushing back the surroundings. Uh, the displacement work uh, is being accounted for in H. H itself is tabulated. You'll find this tabulated. It's more, uh, more so than you. Uh, we find tabulations for H. Um, uh, in the in the uh, in the tables in the property tables, uh, and tends to be a more important more important one than you as it turns out. And the reason is, of course, most things that happen in the atmosphere are at constant pressure. So constant pressure is a lot easier to achieve. Just sticking a weight on a piston gives me the constant pressure. Uh, not so di more difficult to to achieve constant volume as it turns out. Uh, so it's, this is why H tends to be uh, more useful. For us. But anyways, let's let's continue with our uh, deliberations and let's consider with our analysis. If H is a function of uh, temperature and pressure, then what I can do, I can look at dH as a differential. You remember from your uh, maths module that you can represent this thing as partial dH by dt. I'm going to bring this line down and say constant pressure here. I'm holding, obviously, I've got two properties. I'm holding one of them constant. Uh, when I do this derivative, so that's dt, plus partial dh by dp, yeah? Uh, and this is at constant temperature, and that's dp. But for this process, p is not changing. So let's get rid of that. This is, uh, the pressure's vanishing here. Uh, and I'm going to call this thing, uh, this derivative here, uh, Cp. So what we have then, I might as well do it all in one go. We've got dh equal to delta q. Uh, we've got dh, following this through, is equal to Cp dt equals delta q. Okay. So dh, let's bring the dh down, is given by this result. Uh, and if I just write this, so that's one side of the equation, uh, and this is the other side. And again, exactly what we did with the what we did for the u, I can integrate this thing to find, well, we can integrate all this thing really. Let's do that then. Integrating it we're going to find that uh, the integral from state point one to state point two of dh, that's equal to h2 minus h1. So the change in enthalpy is equal to the integral from one to two. Well, we know it's, let's, let's be more precise than that. It's Cp dt, uh, so it's from t1 to t2. Since I know the differential uh, I'm integrating with respect to is uh, is uh, dt. Of course, if Cp is a function of t, quite often it's all these uh, dependent on temperature more than anything else. And I know that functionality, then I can integrate this. Uh, but also, in certain cases, Cp can be considered reasonably a constant. Maybe over a small temperature regime, you find it's constant. Or you can take a mean value of it. You know. For practical engineering terms, we can do that type of thing. Uh, so we find then that uh, for Cp equal to a constant, this becomes gives us a nice simple formula. Cp uh, is equal to T2 minus T1. Uh, and of course, on the other side of the equation, we have that the integral, uh, well, this is equal to 
the integral from 1 to 2 of delta q, and therefore that gives me q1 to remember, which is not the difference, it's it's, uh, it's that of it, so that's h2 minus h1. So that's quite an important formula. Uh, and for this process, it allows us to work out uh, the heat transfer that's going into the system. Uh, or if you know the heat transfer going into the system, we can work out other things. But uh, uh, but CP here, I should mention, I probably did mention on the other, that the units for this thing, this is kilojoules per kilogram, of course, uh, for specific enthalpy, that's what that is. It's got the same units as U. Uh, PV has that unit as well, by the way. Uh, so that's kilojoules per kilogram. But uh, CP is multiplied by... Um, the temperature here. so this has to be kilojoules per kilogram k yes so the units uh let's put it in a the bracket there kilojoules per kilogram kelvin so that's the units for and it's exactly the same for cv i didn't say it but it, it's the same thing uh, remember that the only difference was it was used here uh, so cv has got the same units as cp uh, kilojoules per kilogram k. So this is quite a convenient way, again, of working out um, things that we can't measure uh, necessarily directly. We can't measure energy directly, we can't measure enthalpy directly, but what we can measure is temperature, certainly. Uh, and with, if we're given certain information, um, and these are properties, of course, CP, CV, and H are all properties. So these we add in the we're adding uh, more properties to our system. So our system now, what have we got? We've got um, we've got the U, of course. We've got the V. We've got the T. We've got the P uh, pressure. We've got the CV. We've got the CP. And we've got the H. So we've got quite a few properties that have been added to uh, our list. Uh, and we've got more to add uh, to that. Uh, but we can see, we start to see, if we know the CP values, and generally these are given to us for all the problems that we're going to be considering generally, uh, unless you're given your information, you, you have to work that out, uh, you could be given the temperature difference and the, the amount of energy going into the system, then you could work it out, of course. But generally, uh, a lot of these things are tabulated, and practically then for problems that we want to solve, um, what, we do, what we're given, in fact, is this, uh, these values. Um, and we're, then we use the, the values to uh, work out other things. Um, well, I think that's as much as I want to say about the, uh, the first law uh, of thermodynamics. We're starting to get to the situation now where we can, um, where we can start doing calculations. Uh, I should say also, before I finish this, that sometimes it's not appropriate to use C, P and C, V values. Uh, and that happens when, and we're going to consider it next next time, is when we've got a phase change. Uh, because when we've got a phase change, uh, we have something called latent energy uh, being released from the system or absorbed. Um, and that happens at constant temperature. Uh, and for this type of, for this thing, you'll notice I had to calculate, I was looking at the derivative with respect to temperature. And if we fix temperature, then we have a problem there. So we're finding, we're going to find that we can't use these things when we've got a phase change taking part where, for instance, you know, a liquid turns to a vapour uh, or even a solid turns to a liquid. And we need to consider those things in thermodynamics. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful, and not always appropriate. Uh, but if you avoid the phase change regions, uh, generally, you can use these. You can use these. Uh, these things will be tabulated, and generally, you can use them. Well, I think I've said enough, uh, so I'll say goodbye. Bye.